All right, what's up everyone? It's me, Bike. And I wanted to talk about something in the game. It's an event called Short Circuits. And as you can see, it's this little letterbox over here that has this zzzt event sort of thing. It's called Short Circuit, and it creates an explosion on a circuit that you have if the circuit is connected to a battery. And obviously, I've got a few rows of batteries here. I want to show you the size of the explosions and stuff like that because short circuits have a very love-hate relationship with people. Some people think they're a tiny deal and they don't matter at all and they don't affect the game. Other people think they're a game ending and the worst thing ever. I personally don't think they're that big of a deal, but I don't use batteries very often. But I will get into how to avoid them later on. So I made a video on this in the past. And to be quite frank with myself, it's good to be critical sometimes of yourself. Uh, it's a terrible video, because in the video I don't explain things very well, and I am wasting a shit ton of power in the video. The base is dumb and stuff like that. There's a whole lot of reasons why it's not a great video, so I may as well just make this sort of updated one now, where I can discuss it, because that one is slightly outdated too, just because of the fact that it was two alphas ago. Anyways, hope you guys are having a nice day. Let's take a look. So over here I've got a row of 60 batteries, and I'm going to go ahead and turn on unlimited power. Cue the Star Wars memes and put down one battery over here. As you can see, we are not joined by any colonists today. Unfortunately, they all died. They were fried. Okay, so I filled this up. That's just unlimited power. It just gives you like 60 million watts a second or something like that. It gives you 600 million watt days. So I'm gonna go ahead into dev mode, execute incident, and short circuit event. And as you can see, there's an explosion about to happen here. Explosion. And it is a tiny explosion. The radius of the explosion, it is a circle, just by the way, a remote circle, like Minecraft circles kind of thing. Uh, it is a circle, and the radius was about three there. The diameter was about three, excuse me. Um, so if I go ahead and add in another few batteries, make it the big six, put down the long line here, because a short circuit can happen anywhere where there are uh, conduits. Whoops. Wait for this to fill up. Execute incident, short circuit. Here's the explosion. And that was it. As you can see, that was a diameter of about five. So, as you can see, the explosion is not exactly linear. In fact, there is a post-process curve to it. Just like in everything else in Rimworld, from what I can tell at least, there's a post-process curve to it that shapes the explosion. So if I go ahead and add this, now this is 60, which is 10 times this, 10 times that. So let me go ahead and make sure that this one doesn't happen. So I'm going to cut the circuit over there. And you can see how big of an explosion this leaves you with. Go ahead and measure it. It's 25. That is a diameter of 25, which is a pretty damn big explosion. I'm going to delete these because they're all going to explode now. And the batteries, the batteries exploding will probably give off a bigger explosion than the original one, but that is interesting. Go ahead and add this on. I'm going to create a blueprint here. Bat pack one. If you don't know what the blueprint mod is, I have a video up on it on my channel. I'll go ahead and do this. So now we have a few instances. We have a few instances of batteries in different locations, not connected by circuits. You can get a good idea. By now though, all the newbies, you probably are aware of what this is if you've played one or two games and you've used batteries, which you probably have. Can't imagine why you wouldn't. Right, let me turn this off. Um, but all the veterans, you probably have a very good idea of what's going on here. Short circuits are painful. Late game, they're not such a big deal though. As you can see, we have an explosion over here. And you can see that the other batteries are perfectly fine. Now that was the big problem in my other video and that Rimworld has actually been updated since then. So there was a time when short circuits would clear out all the batteries. Everything. Now the short circuit event could have happened in any of these. I didn't know that it was going to happen in this one. It could have happened in any of the six or the five that I had up. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I guess it did the most cinematic one, which is over here. But it could have happened in any of these. The only way to actually mitigate that is to deconstruct the conduit or have one of these power switches. And even this is subject to change. In the future. Now I don't have a colonist, so I'm gonna go ahead and have to spawn in one. So sorry to the dude who joins us, Skultz. But your one and only job in life is to flick switches, buddy. So I cannot do that for you. Okay, 
So I'm gonna go ahead and turn these off. You just meant to pass butter. Turn that on. And as you can see, short, no short circuits over here. And I can do that again several times and not have to worry about anything because I have disconnected. There is no conduit connecting them here. As you can see, there is no conduit. Now that actually never used to be the case, surprisingly. It never was like that, which was really strange at the time. Um, but things have changed. Rimworld is getting better and I think this is one of the better changes that makes people want to use batteries more, which is fantastic. Now you're probably wondering, but Barky, what's the biggest explosion ever? Well, I can show you, luckily. So I have this thing called a Barky's battery over here. To show you how much energy is stored in it, I, I actually don't think it's very possible. But I can show you exactly how much. Delete that quickly. So it has 1.2, no, 1,000, no, 120 billion, I think, is the number. I don't know. So that if I turn on fast power, or unlimited power, sorry, and turn it on to 60,000, you can see that the yellow bar hasn't even shown yet. It is filling up. This is not an illusion to your eyes. It is filling up. Uh, it's currently at 400 million watt days, 500 million, 600 million. As you can see, it's about to hit a billion. Uh, but no yellow bar yet. So this took me a very long time to fill up. Although in, I made this battery in dev mode. So trust me, it's nothing special. But yeah, it'll, it'll wreck things. It can power an entire base. I think I can see... No, no yellow bar yet. There's no sliver of the yellow bar just yet. So it's a lot of power stored in this thing. In fact, this would take several days of real time to charge up fully. So just keep that in mind. It is... This is, by far, you'll never use this much power. In your entire time playing Rimworld, in your lifetime, you will never use close to this much power. Unless you're using some super modded crap. Well, not crap, but super modded playthrough. So I've gone ahead and put down the short circuit here. I mean, sorry, I've gone ahead and put down some conduits here, and we can take a look at how big this explosion is. Okay. Did you guys see that? Was it too quick for everyone? Okay, well, I can actually... Enunciate how big it is for you. It was about here. Okay, so that's another thing that I have to tell you now. So that is the biggest explosion you can get. That was a ridiculous amount of power. As you can see, it's 12 and then 11 zeros. 11 zeros. And here comes the rain guard. He knows that there's fire happening. He wants to clear it up for us. Thank you, rain guard. And this poor cougar got absolutely destroyed. So there is a post-process curve to how big the explosion is, and I spoke about this at the start of the video, um, in that it does try to curve it to make the explosions not massive. So for example, 4 batteries might give me a decent sized explosion. 40 batteries will not give me 10 times that explosion size, it curves it down. The, it caps out at about 29, a diameter of about 29, um, the circle, so the explosion will be about 29. Which is still massive, by all intents and purposes. In that it'll probably wreck a base. It'll probably wreck everything inside your base. But at that point, you will have so much power that I cannot imagine what you would be doing to use even a smidgen of it. Because at that point, you're having close to, you know, like 100,000 watts. Maybe you have like 100 batteries. I would assume it caps out at about there. So anyways, that is the short circuit. And there are ways to avoid short circuit. And to a lot of people, short circuit is one of the worst events in the game. I see a lot of people on Reddit saying that they wish that they could remove short circuits. And, you know, like, at the same time, I can sort of see where they're coming from because I totally understand, like, man, short circuits are annoying as fuck sometimes. Just gone ahead and made this look really nice. Let me clear up the weather. I know the rain god is, like, keen for us to be okay, and I really appreciate it. So now, in my last video, I said that compartmentalizing your base, separating everything, was a good idea. I'm still... I'm still partial to that, and in fact, if you watch my games, my streams, you'll see that just out of habit, I actually build my rooms separate to each other. So I might do something like this to try and make it look nice, and have like a village type thing, and just screw with someone's OCD completely. Might do something like that, but generally, I have something along these lines. Make the rooms two by two, and have one line separating them in the middle. If I'm playing really, if I'm like trying to try hard, I'll do something like this. Have the rooms 
be like that, and then have a space of three between them, and have a fire break in the middle. Now there are a few ways to complete the avoid short circuit. Now the one, the first one is probably obvious to a lot of you. Don't make your base out of flammable material. Don't make your base out of flammable material. Let me go ahead and put down wood. What happens when a short circuit happens inside a wooden building? I don't need to tell you. I'll show you, but I don't need to tell you. As you can see, the building goes bye-bye quickly. In fact, I don't think you, you very, you'll be hard-pressed to have a colony that can put out a short circuit within several wooden buildings quickly. Now, what happens when you've got them all connected? Like this. So you have a short circuit, let's put it over there. Now quickly, it's containable. Oh, the rain god came and helped us out again. So if you don't know, in Rimworld, there is a rain god. And if it detects too much fire, it'll actually clear it up for you. I appreciate that. I really do. I really appreciate it. If I could just turn you off a little bit though. Just so I could show this video. That would be amazing. I'm going to put the fire down again. So it starts off with three, quickly spreads to about four or five tiles, and it starts spreading. Just remember, we don't have flammable floors here, but you will generally have flammable floors in the beginning. Unless you've got a decent supply of stone. But no, if I do the exact same with sandstone, the best stone, I'm joking, uh, you'll see that nothing actually happens. It looks like nothing's even lighting on fire. There is no fire, it just looks like an explosion. As you can see, this is pretty resilient to flame. I believe it's zero percent. While wood is pretty high. Rain God's back, guys. Rain God is back. So those are two ways to completely mitigate it. In that you separate your buildings. So if there's a fire, you can you can save buildings, and your colonists won't die of overheating. Because inside there, if it's roofed, it'll be superheated temperatures, like this. You can separate them and have fire breaks in the middle as a non-flammable materials, non-flammable floors. It does take up a little bit of extra space, but that is 100% worth it. Well, let me put down something to burn here. And you'll see what happens inside the room pretty quickly. Unless the wooden door doesn't burn for some reason. How? Th th is the rain going inside or something? Wait, was that a normal explosion? I don't actually see. Anyways, you'll see the temperatures quickly start to rise. And it caps out at about 2,000 degrees Celsius. Or 3,600 Fahrenheit. 3,600. Which will kill anyone. Any colonist inside. Basically, unless you have some super modded stuff as well. Uh, but it'll kill them pretty damn quickly. So keeping them separated means that the rooms won't actually leak heat into each other. Which is something that happens. And if the wall tears down, they won't share heat completely. And then the third option for avoiding short circuits is to not use batteries at all. Absolutely not use batteries at all. So if I remove this battery, actually it's, it had no power in it anyways, and I go ahead and click on short circuit, nothing happens because there are no batteries. Even if I turn on unlimited power, you'll see the lights start to turn on over here. And I go ahead and do a short circuit, nothing will happen. Now, not using batteries is a bit tougher. If you watch my streams, you'll see that I do it every single time I play. I don't use batteries. It's a bit of a challenge. But it is fun. And fuel generators really allow you to really allow you to mitigate short circuits down to a decent point. There never used to be fuel generators. But now you can have entire rooms just dedicated to them. Not only that, but if you play at colder temperatures, they give you a little bit of heat. Which is nice, I guess. Which is, it's, it's pretty nice. It's, it's okay. But yeah, those are the ways to get rid of short circuits. I don't think that they should be removed from the game. I just think that they're a little bit confusing because you can't actually avoid them. There is no way to avoid them. And now I'm going to get the one comment that says, actually, you can. Noob. Noob. Reported channel. Uh, you can use mods and stuff. Well, obviously, I'm talking about vanilla. Um, for a lot of people, they mainly play vanilla. A lot of people only play vanilla and are only interested in vanilla things. So this is just for vanilla. There are RT Fuse mods, RT Short Circuit, I think it's called, which I've done a video on and I'll put a link in it. I'll put a link to it in the description if you want to mitigate this completely. Go ahead. Otherwise, you can just edit the dev files yourself and just remove <laughs> Short Circuit 
Just remove the event, even in the scenario editor. Poor Skultz, he's worked to death every day. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all I I hope you all have an amazing day. <laughs> and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye bye. Hey you! Thanks so much for making it to the end of my video. I really, really appreciate it. Editing videos is both my hobby and my passion, and with that in mind, I've decided to open up a Patreon if you'd like to support me besides in the amazing ways that my subscribers already usually do. I've got loads of perks and benefits, including having your own personally custom made colonist being one of my default colonists in the mod showcases, special roles on discord joining me while i stream monthly q a's and podcasts i've got it all come take a look all support is always appreciated monetarily or not if you're a subscriber then be sure to hit the little bell over here to always be up to date with videos i push out and head over to the discord if you ever want to have a deep and meaningful chat with me and last but not least i hope you're having an amazing day